Good afternoon. How's everyone today? Good Doing afternoon. Doing well. Blessed and highly favored. Blessed and highly If you can see me and hear me, you have been blessed of the Lord. And this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. In it. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Normally, I'm kind of uh, personal about that. I, I say I will rejoice, but I want to invite you guys to rejoice in the glory of God today also. We're going to open up with a prayer, and then we're going to go into uh, our uh, convocation uh, uh, lesson. And uh, we're going to have a glorious time in the Lord. Is that right? Amen. I am. I don't know about you. I, I, <laughs> I, I get personal about this thing because... God is good to me. We have to realize that and uh, give God the praise due to his name. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day and this opportunity to come before you. Come in your word, trusting in you and your word, needing your word, and glorifying in you because you are our head. You are everything. Thanking you for how you have blessed us how you have prepared our hearts and minds to begin another convocation, Vacation Bible School, and the words that you have given us from the book of Jonah, uh, chapter 1 through uh, chapter 4. We just thank you for being such an awesome God. We thank you for our leader, Bishop George Edward Sr., for the mind that you have given him to present a convocation so that your people can learn of you. And we thank you once again for your presence, your spirit that's filling this air and airwaves today. We ask that you let it rest upon each and every one on this line today, in this meeting, everyone that's going to attend the convocation. Now, God, we ask that you bless it, that it go forth and serve your purpose, that your people will be fed according to your riches and glory. Now, God, we relinquish ourselves. We give up our way that you may have your way. We ask that you come into our hearts and our minds. Guide us in the things that we should say and things that we should do, that your word may be glorified. We ask these and other blessings in your son, Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 And once again, I would like to welcome you to our sum summer convocation, Vacation Bible School for our adults. And again, we are studying the book of Jonah, chapters 1 through 4. Our theme for the convocation is, Go Where I Send Thee. And we're going to begin at uh, Jonah, chapter 1. And uh, we're going to discuss the commission of Jonah. If anybody have anything that they want to say at this particular time, uh, you want to lead out in the scripture, feel free. If not, then I will start the scripture, and then we will um, uh, comment on what the scripture and the word of God has revealed to us. Yeah. You can go ahead. Absolutely. Amen. Okay, mm -hmm. we're looking at uh, Jonah chapter 1, verses 1, two, 1 through 2. God called Jonah. The scripture says, and now, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of of Amatia, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Now, I, I just want to uh, 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 read something to Jonah was commissioned uh, in the Old Testament, and we too have been commissioned, according to Mark 16 and 15. And he said, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And we know that disciples are learners and doers of the word of God. Is, is that right? Amen. According to my Bible. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The good news, salvation is free and it is of the Lord. And, and, and like Jonah, God was sending Jonah out to a nation, Nineveh. Uh, which was the capital of Syria, to let these people know that their sins had come up to him. And we know that God detests sin. He, do, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't sit well with sinners. But because he's a gracious God, he gives us chance after chance after chance to do the same thing that Jonah was called to do, and that was to repent. The same thing that he sent Jonah to Nineveh to warn the people to do, and that was repent. So the word came to Jonah, and uh, 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 
uh, Jonah had a different idea about what he wanted to do. Can anybody comment on that? Well, um, we know that uh, Jonah didn't want to go mm. uh, because, number one, he was fearful mm -hmm. about going. And then also what we'll discover later when we get to chapter four, he's going to say to God, I didn't want to go because you yes. said you were going to destroy him. But yeah. um, I didn't want to go because I knew how gracious you were. And I knew that if I went and they, you know, turned from their wicked ways, you weren't going to do it. So basically, and it, it's just in my opinion, and sometimes we have to be careful, it almost seemed to me like Jonah told God, you wasted my time. Wow. Well, wow. Well, not, uh, uh, and also, we've got to look at the root of Jonah. Right. Now, Jonah, Jonah was uh, 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 a Jew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the people of Nineveh were Gentiles. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that word came to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So Jonah didn't think that the people of Nineveh deserved yeah. to be blessed by God. But who are we to question God about <clears throat> who's to be blessed and who's not? Because he says in the scripture, all souls are mine. So that meant the Jew and the Gentile. And Amen. here we go. Jonah acted like a Jew because Jonah <clears throat> is, is, is um, resisting the things that God asked him to do, resisting the word of God. And this has always been the problem with the Jews. They resisted. God, even up until today. They don't believe who God said the Savior is. They don't believe that Jesus is the son of the true and living God. So we see Jonah etching history, and it's still standing even today. But we look at our script, and God told him to do two things. Go to Nineveh. Is that right? That's Amen. right. Uh, uh, we've been commissioned to go into the hedges and the highways and the byways and preach and teach his word because the sin of the world has risen to the point that it's become a stench in the nose of God. And God's desire is that none should uh, uh, um, perish, but that all should come to repentance. Is that right? Amen. Amen. And the, sinners, the sinners won't stand in the sight of God, but God loves us so much. He loved the Ninevites so much that he wanted to give them an opportunity to change from those things that are not like God so that when the time came, they could, could be accepted and received in the presence of God. So he told him to go to Nineveh and cry against it. Now, I got a question here, and uh, uh, I'm always asking questions. I like to do that. Is there anybody that you know? that you need to cry against and let them know, listen, God is not pleased with the things that you're doing. Somebody in your family, your neighbor, or just to extend an invitation to the love and grace and mercy of God. Listen, God, God sent his only begotten son that if you just believe on him, if you turn from those things that are not like God, he promised you that you can have eternal life. Amen. Amen. I think we all do, and I and, and I think sometimes that uh, the commission itself is complex, but then a lot of times it's re it's really simple, and I I, I really think that um, that we could all uh, simply do our part, uh, all right. and, and, and not you know just saying that you just hounding somebody, but even just a positive word to somebody every day or every other day. And that might even cause a person to say, well, Elder Long, every day I see you, you always got a smile on your face. You always got something positive to say, no matter what's going on. I, I want to know how, how you come to be like that. Well, then that's your opportunity to do that. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of times we miss those opportunities uh, because we're ashamed to share, but the Bible tells us that we overcome by the word of our testimony. And not only do we overcome, we can help somebody else because I, because Sister Ramos is a private person, 
uh, because she's a private person, I don't know what she's going through. Amen. But if I share my testimony, she still <laughs> may not tell me what she's going through. Right. Amen. But that might give her the courage to say, well, if he made it through it, then I can too. And so yeah. we have to we have to take the commission and it's an everyday thing. It's not something that and, and you know, and I'll say this and I'll quit, but a lot of times we take, you know, time off of vacations on God, but we act like we don't understand that the devil goes all day, every day. Right. And if, if, if he had to make a report, his report would be better than some of ours because My He's going to say every day I walk the earth to and fro seeing what I what kind of mischief I can cause. Come on. But if God calls you every day and say, did you pray today? Can you say yes every day? Did you witness to somebody? Can you say yes every day? Did you say a kind word to somebody? And so when we go through our checklist with God, we got to realize that we got to keep up with the devil doing good as he does evil. Amen. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's powerful there. That's powerful. That's very powerful. So uh, the reason that God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh was because their wickedness has come up before God. Mm -hmm. And this lets us know that God is watching everything. Yes. He sets mm -hmm. what looks low. And he's keeping a record of what is happening. And even to the point that your commission. He said, if I send you to warn them and you don't warn a person and they die in their sins, their blood is on your hand. And so many mm -hmm. times we, uh, we, uh, we, we read the scripture, but we don't take into mind the, um, the depth of what the scripture is saying. Because mm -hmm. now as a believer, you got a responsibility mm -hmm. and anybody else's job at some point in time, if you're derelict in your duty, you're going to get fired. Is that right? Right. Amen. But guess what? God is a God of a second chance. Amen. Amen. And we see that in his dealings with no, uh, Jonah. Jonah. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the second verse and uh, uh, the third verse. So it says, Jonah attempted to flee from God's call. And that's like us so many times. We want to define God and not listen to God. Right. We want to determine whether we can sing in the choir, whether we can work on the usher board, whether we can teach Sunday school, or whether we're going to absurd the pastor. But God called us to a certain job. And like Jonah, he tried to flee from the things that God wanted us to do. I ain't going back to church no more. They won't right. let me do this. They won't let me do that. And, and, and I can do just as good as this person. But you have a calling. We all have callings. We got to operate in that calling. The Bible says let everything be done decent and in order. Mm -hmm. And when we follow the order of God, we'll never be out of order. And God is the one that gives the promotion. He's the one that speaks to the pastor and says, hey, this guy uh, uh, needs to be elevated from just being a brother to a deacon, uh, from a deacon to an elder. So if we allow God and the word of God to be our guide, allow God to have his way in our lives, then the things that we desire, because God is God and he know what we can handle and can't handle, then we will receive those things that God has in store for us. Is that right? That's right. Amen. So um, Jonah tried to run from God. Does that sound like the appropriate thing to do? No, sir. Hit your button, no. hit your button Bishop. There you go. It's back. Okay. No. I think somebody. Uh, so what we have here, uh, uh, Jonah is disobeying God's command. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then that's putting him in the in the place of a sinner. Right. And sinners, God does not hear their uh, prayer until they get to the point that they want to repent. Is that right? That's Amen. Right. So it meant that Jonah had a need also, just right. like the people he was going going to warn. And so many times we don't realize that um, we're in a position that we need God. 
And we need to change some things in our lives before we can be effective to do the things that God called us to do. Is that right? Amen. Amen. So um, Jonah didn't want to go to Assyria. And he did everything he could to escape God not realizing that he was bringing more judgment upon himself. And can you imagine a Jewish man in New York during World War II going to say, I'm going to bring ter terrible judgment on Germany? Wow. That guy would have been scoffed, talked about, maybe he would have been taken out. Is that right? Yes, true. So we look at Jonah sizing up himself and the <laughs> responsibility that God gave him, and he tried to flee. Is that right? That's true. Mm -hmm. But the scripture lets us know, no matter where we go, God is there. Is that right? Amen. So, in essence, I'm trying to say that there was nowhere for Jonah to hide. Is that right? Nowhere. He couldn't escape God. Is that right? But his his finite mind told him, what did what what did he think he could do? I don't have to go to Nineveh. I can flee to Tarsus. And um, aboard the destination that God gave him and the things that God gave him to do. So what did he do? He found this ship in Tarsus. And he got down into that ship as far as he can get. Guess what he did? Went to sleep. Yeah. Isn't that like the people today? They're asleep when they should yeah. be on their jobs. They're asleep when they should be doing what God called them to do. Amen. So he found this ship. And what does the scripture say he did in that ship? Look at verse 3. So what did he do? I apologize for that. I apologize. I had to step away from for a second. So if you ask me a question, I apologize for that. Okay. Um, we're at verse one and three. But mm -hmm. Jonah used to flee to Tarsus from the presence of God. But we, we realized that he couldn't escape the presence of God. Is that right? That's true. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the scripture says in Book of Psalms, if I send to the heavens there, you are there. If mm -hmm. I send in to the lowest depth, you are there. And so there was nowhere for Jonah to run, nowhere for him to escape. So the only thing he could have done was to do what God asked him to do. Right. But he still insisted on fleeing. So he went to Tarsus and he found this ship and he got aboard this ship and he paid the fare to go. <laughs> Tarsus. Do you not know when you, de you depart from God, you pay the price of leaving God? That's true. Amen. So, in him departing from God and getting on the ship, he brought calamity to the people that was aboard that ship. Is that right? Yes, sir. Amen. And what did God do? Jonah 1 and 4, what does the scripture say? But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Mm -hmm. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was likened to be broken. Every now and then, God has to break us. Wow. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, he has to break us to get our minds focused on the fact that he is God. To get our mind focused on that he is the creator. And we are the creation. And we know that the creation can never be greater than the creator. Is that right? Right. And so many times we go through things in life and that question comes up, why me? Why not you? Why the people of Nineveh? Because there was something about the city of Nineveh that got God's attention. And God wanted to correct whatever it was or give them a chance to know that it could be corrected. And the same thing with us. So many things go on in the world today in our lives at home. And um, we always ask them why, but ask yourself this, why not? 
Because if God is everywhere, he's watching everything. And if he's watching everything, he's controlling everything. Right. Even when we get to the point of um, the storm, God sent that storm. Is that right? Right. And then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to break or be broken. And he'll send those same storms in our lives. But if we look at things and begin to realize that it's something out of line, and we need need to do something to straighten up what's out of line, then we'll see the grace and glory of God. Not so much as what he's taken us through, but the fact that he's able to take us through it. It is very important that we re realize the type of God that we serve. So many times, nobody wants to be punished. And with our kids, it come a time that you have to discipline them to some extent. They don't like discipline. You don't like to discipline them. And the same thing with God. But to get us to the point that we can be uh, acceptable in the sight of God, every now and then, he will have to discipline us. So get Jonah's attention. He sent this tempest. So we're looking at Jonah, the first chapter five and six. Would somebody like to read that for me? Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast horse the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Mm -hmm. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. Mm. That's, a, that's a tall order, is that right? That now is. let's go back. Let's go to the beginning of this scripture. It says the mariners. These were skilled people at what they were doing. Is that right? That's true. So much, so much that when the tempest came, they realized that it was something wrong. Something was out of the ordinary that was happening. And so many times, we put more pressure on other people because we're caught up in sin ourselves. Wow. Amen. And uh, 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 the book of Psalms says, blessed is, blessed is the man that walketh not in the capital of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners. Now, we can look Amen. at that twofold. You can appear to God as a sinner, which we all are, saved by grace. And then you can preempt someone else from being saved by the life that you live. So here we see Jonah is uh, endangering the lives of the mariners. You got to go home to their families when the season is over. And now... He's at the point to where the ship is about to break because he's sinning. So what is it telling us? We got to stop sinning so that the world can see in us that there's a correct or right way to live before God. Is that right? Amen. 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 So, so, so even the sinners, it says every man cried out to his God. And that's interesting because it said they cried out to his God. Mm -hmm. Now you got to look at and remember I mentioned before that the people in, in Nineveh were Gentiles. They hadn't completely accepted God. Is that right? right. But they had gods that they believed in. So they were crying out to their gods. And what was Jonah doing? Sleeping. Sleep. Fast asleep. Wake mm -hmm. up, church. Somebody mm -hmm. needs help. Is that right? Yes. So he was fast asleep. And uh, 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 but this is a this was a tragic scene. How can you go to sleep when there's so much that need to be done in this world today? The Bible tells us when it's nighttime, no man can work. Mm -hmm. So when we have the opportunity to do the things that we've called to do, we've got to take advantage of that opportunity. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And then also got to realize that God said, "I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you." Right. So Jonah had no business, number one, run to Tarsus to get on the ship. Number two, getting in the, the bottom of the ship as far down as he can get and going to sleep. Is that right? That's Amen. right. So Jonah was asleep amid the confusion and noise. And uh, these people calling on their gods, calling on their gods, calling on their gods, trying to get a breakthrough, and there was no breakthrough. Then they begin to wonder what is actually going on here why is all of this happening to us 
this great wind, the ship is about to be broken up. So there was one person that was left aboard the ship that hadn't, hadn't given account of himself or even his God. And who was that person? Just Jonah. 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 Is there a Jonah in the house today? Is somebody <laughs> sleeping on the job? Hmm? Amen. Jonah was in a place where he hoped no one would see him or disturb him. Sleeping Christians like to hide out among the church. Wow. So many people come in the church every Sunday, paying their tithes and running the roll, but they're not doing what God asked them to do. And this was the case with John. He was asleep and he thought nobody knew about him. So he was in a place where he couldn't handle the situation going on. So it lets us know that sleeping Christians stay away from their work. Mm. Sleeping Christians, sleeping Christians stay awake from their work. So what did they ask John? What do you mean, sleeper? Arise and call on your God. They were calling on their gods, the wood, wood God, the, the sun God, the rain God, the tree God, the bird God, the lion God. Nothing, Nothing. was making a difference. That's right. Then they asked John, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise. Call on your God. Listen, what we do portrays the type of God that we serve. Amen. And if you sleep on the job, how do anybody know that you serve the true and living God? Right. So we get down to verse 7. And they said one to another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots. And the lot fell on Jonah. Even though he was mm -hmm. trying to duck and dodge God, the responsibility still came to him that he needed to do something, a call on his God, which was the only God that could make a difference in that situation. Then they said to him, please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? That's a good question. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's a good question. I'm serious. We Amen. named it everything but what is your occupation what is your occupation matthew says go ye into all the hedges and the highways and the byways huh uh, uh, uh mark 16 and 15 and he said unto them go you into all the world and preach the gospel what is your occupation wow. amen wow what is your occupation so they begin to question Jonah, and he answered, he said, prophet, I'm a prophet. Then the sailors were even more terrified. Everybody understood the men of God. Everybody understood the position that they had. And you being a prophet, you had the head of the clan. You being an elder, you at the head of the class. You being a missionary, you at the head of the class. You being a preacher, you at the head of the class. Right. But if we don't operate in that calling, that occupation, then we'll sleep on the job. So Jonah tell, tells them about who he is and what he has done. I'm a prophet and I'm running away from my God. So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. I tell you what, <laughs> if I knew for certain that he made the sea and the land, I would be afraid of him too. <laughs> That's right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm out there in his ocean. Mm -hmm. And and it's going and, and, and tossing to and fro. The worst tempest I've ever seen in my don't you know I'll be afraid of my God? Amen enough that I'd be willing to repent. The God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Jonah knew the truth about God, even though his, his claim to fear the Lord was only partially true because he was running from God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Amen. I ain't going to 
church no more because them, them people in that church don't like me. That ain't that ain't the truth. Come on. They're not. Is that right? You're not. Amen. And um, he tells us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. He tells us, I will uphold you with my right. So it's important that we realize, fear God, and realize that God got our back. Is that right? Amen. So we have to know from Jonah, why have you done this? An unbeliever who knows some truth about God can rightly rebuke a Christian who is resisting God. Why have you done this? Why do we do what we do when God called us to do something different? Right. Amen. Why do we run and hide and go to sleep on the job? The pastor calling us to prayer meeting in the morning. We're too weary to wake up, set your alarm clock, but guarantee you when the football game come on, the parade start, uh, or the class start, buddy, we on the job. Right. Serving the devil. So Amen. Jonah, Jonah was on the job, allowing the devil to use him. But then he got truthful about what he was saying. They want to know, what shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? What did he tell them? Throw me overboard. Throw me overboard. Throw me overboard. Wow. Throw me overboard. So why did Jonah want to be thrown overboard? Did he have compassion for the sailors? <laughs> well, now for me, um, and it's a funny thing, if Jonah knew that the only way that the way for them to be saved was for him to be off the ship, mm -hmm. he could have jumped. Wow. But he made them throw him because to me, even though they didn't fully know and understand the power of his God, them throwing him showed that they had a willingness to want to believe in his God because he says, if you throw me overboard, my God will stop all of this. Come on. Well, yeah. them, throwing him, them throwing him overboard was a, a sign of them saying Activating they believed in his God. Come on. Come on. They, I, and I tell people all the time, yeah. he could have jumped. Yeah. But yeah. They, they had to, and, and, and sometimes, Matter of fact, all of the time, when we want to see God move, you have to take that first step in an act of faith and belief and obedience. Yes. 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 And yes. for them to throw him overboard um, because he said, my God will stop this if y'all throw mm -hmm. me overboard, that's, mm -hmm. that's why they did it. Because in essence, like I say, he could have jumped because off Absolutely. the ship is off the ship. Right. But Absolutely. they had to throw him off to show that they believe. Absolutely. And because of their showing their faith in God, he stopped the storm for them. That's that's good. I like that. And and, and uh, I just want to add to that. It it also <clears throat> let you know that sinners will believe in God. If you give them a reason to believe God, they'll oh, trust yeah. God. Oh yeah. But Jonah was a little crafty to me because he left the responsibility to, to them. You said, Brother Solomon, he could have jumped. We can stop sinning when we want to stop sinning, can't we? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's turning from those things that we are involved in that constitute sin. Is that right? That's right. So so, so Jonah left the responsibility to them. Instead of him repenting, he said, well, if they throw me overboard, then I'll be at the mercy of God. Wow. And so, so much of this lesson, the book of Jonah, is really about God's grace, his mercy, and his love. Because when they threw him overboard, God prepared a big fish to take care of him. Is that right? That's true. And it lets you know... Only God can keep you in the storm. We look at Isaiah uh, 41 and 10. It says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Jonah knew some stuff about God, even though he was running from God. 
Because I tell you what, I be on the ship. I ain't gonna invite nobody to throw me off the ship. Do you hear me? That's, right. That's a deep order out there. Yeah. So, so Jonah knew some stuff about God, but it's up to us to repent. Is that right? That's right. But because of a hard heart, sometimes it's difficult for us to repent. Because of envy, because of jealousy. I, I don't want this person saved. I don't want God to bless them like he's blessing us. Well, if he's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and what he do for one, he do for the others, that's not our responsibility, is it? Right, right. So Amen. we have to repent. We have to repent. So now, we're looking at the, 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 the murders, and they were trying everything they could to get to dry land and begin to throw stuff off the ship to lighten the load. But they begin to pray, oh, Lord, Please don't let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with innocent blood. Wow. They were under the understanding if they threw Jonah overboard that God was going to charge them. But God was setting Jonah up. God was setting the scene to let them know just what he said in Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not. I'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. I'll you with my right hand of faithfulness. And see, that's that's the thing that Jonah tried to use. He was fearful of going to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. We know that God can do anything but fail. Is that right? That's right. Amen. We know that where God sent us, we got to go. Amen. So Amen. it's no use of us uh, 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 making excuses. No use of us acting like somebody standing in the way. We got to go where God sent us to go. Is that right? That's right. That's correct. So we, we're getting down to the last of, of, of our chapter one. Nevertheless, they rolled. The seas ceased from raging after the problem was resolved at that point. But there's still a problem. And as we take up this lesson uh, tomorrow, going into chapter two, we're going to find out that the problem had just begun. But God's love was continuous. Amen. Amen. So our theme says, go where I listen. Whatever God has called you to do, whatever He has put in your heart to do, do it with all your mind. Amen. Like, remember what the pastor says: only what you do for Christ will last. Then we can cut out some of the turbulence, not only in our lives, but in the lives of others that don't know God. Because they're Amen. watching us, our every move, everything that we do. You don't believe they're watching you? Do something that's out of the ordinary. And see, don't the aha, I got you, creep into your life. Right. They'll never let you forget the sin and the fact that you went against the will of the same God you're trying to make me to believe. Remember, Amen. go where I stand. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Any uh, suggestions uh, about our lesson? You know, I just wanted to um, add in because you both said some very powerful things. And so I decided to take notes. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned that Jonah had sin in his heart. Like you said, yes. even, even sitting in the church sometimes, you know, working in the church, sometimes we can have sin in our hearts that is hidden. But God reveals something unto Jonah that maybe Jonah wasn't quite aware that was still in his heart. Mm -hmm. But not only did God use Jonah for his ministry to save other people, but he also used him to save his, and heal his own heart, to reveal mm -hmm. that sin was in his heart so that he can be yes. saved and delivered from that sin. So yeah. a lot of times, just like during this um, situation going on with the injustice and the inequality, you know, sometimes that can reveal some, some hurt, that can reveal some anger. And mm -hmm. even I talked to Bishop about it. I was like, Bishop, this is bringing up some very hurtful situations in my life that I didn't realize I was still hurt by. Mm -hmm. in, in an essence, while I'm ministering to other people about loving and, you know, about <laughs> healing and things like that, God was having to heal me at the same yes. time. Yes, you know? yes. So I, I believe that in Jonah, even though he was being disobedient because he didn't understand God's grace, 
Mm -hmm. When he became obedient, he received his healing also. So that burden of bitterness and envy and jealousy that he had in his heart was healed when he was just obedient to God. So sometimes we just have to go and be obedient and let God fix you while you handle the assignment that he gave you. Absolutely. 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 And then we realize also that obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we do the things that God called us to do, then there'll be peace in our lives. Amen. Amen. Elders, Amen. Would you close us out in prayer? And I yes, will see you guys back tomorrow at the same time. Okay. Yes, Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this uh, meeting. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be able to discuss your word. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to give us the heart and the mind to be obedient to your word. Lord, to go where you send us, to take the steps that you tell us to stake. And Lord, to open our mouths and allow you to speak through us. Lord, let us continue to remember that it's not about us, but it's all about you. And that, Lord, we need to be willing vessels for your use. And Lord, we ask you just continue to keep us in the hollow of your hand on this day and each and every day. Continue to guide us each and every day and allow us to be able to witness to uh, our fellow brothers and sisters and to be able to be a walking and living testament to a dying world that you are the lord and that you are the savior and that you will continue to reward those that diligently seek you and call upon your name in jesus name we do pray amen. Name. Amen. amen 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 and i thank you i pray god blessings upon each and every one of you and keep good your as we go about the remainder of this day's journey amen amen, amen. Amen. That is it. God bless you guys.